Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC. And we're back on the bench, back on with the ZOHD Dart XL. This is just a quick video um, just to show you the build. Uh, build's complete and just to quickly show you how I've got it all connected together. Couple of firsts for me in this, so not used the Matek flight controller before. Um, and also not used the DJI, the proper DJI Air unit. So I've got all that linked up and OSDs working in my goggles and all that sort of stuff. So it's been a good experience, quite good fun. Um, so without further ado, let's get stuck in and take a look. Right then everyone, let's have a look what I've done with the Zo HD Dart XL to get my uh, radio gear and FPV gear in here. Uh, so we'll start with the front hatch. Um, so I've got my air unit fastened in here. Um, so I've just Velcroed that in place for now. Hopefully that'll be okay and it's not gonna um, melt the Velcro if it gets too hot. And then for the camera, um, that was really easy to mount actually. I've just mounted it right in the, in the front there. Um, and then you can see in there, I've got the the wing bolts sort of floating around in here as well. So that's mounted in the front and I've used the supplied bit of foam um, that came with the kit. Um, I'm trying to think what it says. I think it says Run Cam HD2. Um, so that was a spare bit of foam that came in the kit. You get two um, that you can use. And the camera, the, F, the DJI camera fitted in perfectly in there. Um, I just had to wedge it in with just a little bit more foam just to hold it tight. Um, but I've not had to glue anything, so that's all just like a push fit, and it's really nice and solid. Um, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. The only thing I've stuck down is, is the air unit. Um, and then I've got my XT60 connector obviously coming into here. Batteries are going to go there. I think what I'm probably going to do, I've just been having a look at the center of gravity, and it is pretty tail heavy, uh, even with, um, I've got a 3000 milliamp, um, uh, lithium ion battery um, but even with that there it's um, it's still way tail heavy so I think what I might do is use two 4S 2200 LiPos because I've got quite a lot of those spare uh, and uh, a parallel connector to connect those together so that'll give me 4400 milliamps um, I've got the cable so I've got yeah XT60 there and then I've got the um, DJI camera cable here I've only used four of the uh, of the pins or wires so we've got positive negative and then transmit and receive that's all i needed and then in the back let's get this off so here is my f405 matek wing let me just get the light over here a bit more so we can see what's going on um so i've got that all wired up obviously, got my ESC going into it and then the XT60 going down here. I've used some JST cables, um, you might just be able to see in there, to power the camera and for the UART connection. So that's the UART connection there and that's power for the camera. Um, that prov I also, um, there's a little jumper that you have to solder and that gives a, a constant 12 volts, um, I think it is. So I soldered that to uh, solder the jumper and then I've uh, put some pins on there. Um, so that supplies power to the DJI unit and that seems to work fine. Got my S bus here. Um, that is going to the receiver. So I've just got, whoops, sorry about that. I've just got the receiver going under the wing. Um, I might swap the receiver. I've, I've got a Radio Master receiver at the minute, an S bus receiver, but I might swap it for a, um, um, a TBS uh, receiver um, with crossfire uh, and then I've got two servo connections there and then the GPS I've got soldered directly onto the board and I've got the GPS in here as it is designed to go so that sits in there nicely um, tested it all so it was obviously I've never wired up a, a Matek before and soldered a Matek, so it's the first time I've done it. Um, I didn't have really any way of testing it. I did obviously a visual check before I plugged the power in, but to be honest, I just decided to go for it and hope for the best 
and hope there wasn't any blue smoke when I connected it together. And I'm pleased to say that there wasn't and absolutely everything's working on it. So I've tested the GPS, that's working. I'm getting satellites, um, the camera's working, the OSD's working. Um, so obviously the receiver's all working. I've taken it outside in the garden just to check that it picks up uh, satellites, which it does, and then that allowed me, once it got off some satellites, it then allowed me to arm it, and I've tested the motor, and that's all working. Because with the Matek and iNav, it won't let you arm the model without having satellites. Um, there is a command that you can run um, in the command line of the Matek or iNav rather to stop it from doing that, which I did do just to test that I'd got the motor going in the right direction and uh, the prop was on the right way. But then I've set that back to only allow it to arm once it's got satellites enabled. So I had to take it outside just to check that it was going to get some satellites. Um, the only slight uh, thing I, I would say is um, I originally put the board here. Uh, and the speed controller was was sort of further back and, and under this cable tie. But then with the with the um, flight controller here, I then didn't sort of think about it until I went to put the wings on. You can't get the wing bolts in. So that's a little bit of a design flaw, I think. And also the carbon bar, as you can see running across there, isn't in an ideal place either because I then had to move the flight controller forward. So I'd got room to put the bolts in which means I've had to put the flight controller here right underneath this carbon bar so that sort of slides across the flight controller um, you know so it's a, that's not ideal um, I think they probably need to have a think about a better way of I think if they just came up with a different way of um, putting the wings on maybe some sort of mechanism from underneath so you, you could put the flight controller back here that would be pretty good because the other thing you have to be careful of with it being carbon is that, that you've got no wires or anything like that 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 um, that would touch that carbon because that would cause an issue but um, as it happens mine's mine's all okay so that's my setup for the dart um zohd dart xl extreme um i've tested it as much as i can without actually being able to fly it so got all my modes flight mode set up check that's all working with my um transmitter um so i've got manual mode angle mode and acro mode uh, and then i've also set return to home and loiter mode and i've also got a switch for auto trim as well um so gonna test all those things out when we get it down to the flying field the other thing i've set up as well is auto launch so i've got auto launch on a switch um obviously i can't test that until i'm, I'm ready to fly it but as we're in lockdown i'm gonna have to wait a little while but uh, as soon as i do get down to the field after lockdowns being lifted I think here in the UK that's going to be in March, so only a few more weeks to go. We're getting on really well with the vaccinations. So fingers crossed. Um, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you could like and subscribe, that would really help me out. If you do subscribe, then you'll get to see more um, content of me playing with various RC planes, setting up new RC planes, FPV, electric and nitro. So if that's the sort of thing that uh, you like the sound of, then please subscribe. Helps me out a lot. And uh, I'll see you soon for the next one.